Hello friends. Today we start a new series, New Criticism. New critics, two famous names you know. One is J.C. Ransom, the teacher of Clean Brooks, and Clean Brooks, the student of J.C. Ransom. There are also others, I.A. Richards, and we have Alan Tate and so on. So what we are going to do today is to start with the practical criticism as I. R. Richards used to do with his students. He would remove the title of the poem, the name of the author, any other possible suggestions who might have written at what time, such as for example historical, authorial or cultural background of the poem whether the biography of the uh, author and so on. So before uh, getting into the theoretical aspect of new criticism, I would like to present before you a practical, a piece of practical criticism. So that the two main points that the new critics advance, they are first the autonomy of the work of art and also close reading. Now we will attempt a close reading of a few lines of a poem. The poem is very famous. The very first line when I write here you will know what the poem is. So before that please, here is, please, please read this. Do not mock me fellow students. This is a line, a quotation taken from Hamlet, you know. So now you understand what, uh, what I am going to do, please do not mock me. That is the sense that this is, uh, you may agree or you may not uh, agree with what I am saying, but what we are, you got the background, no? A work of art is autonomous. And secondly, you have what is called uh, the uh, Close reading. Close reading of the poem. That's the most important aspect of new criticism. So let's start. Uh, today, first I will I will give you, I am going to, uh, uh, you know the poem, uh, even if I remove the title, you know, you know the author also. But we assume that we don't. Because I thought of taking this uh, lines from this particular poem, because this particular poem, you as you can see, it has got all the characteristics of a modern poem. And that is the lines. First line is, April is the cruelest month. April is the cruelest month. Breeding. Breeding. Lilacs. Out, out of the dead lands, dead land, st stirring, uh, sorry, mixing, mixing memory and desire, memory and desire. Stirring, dull roots with spring rain. Window kept us warm. Window kept us warm. Covering. Earth in forgetful snow, feeding a little life with dried tubers. So, we don't know anything about the other, we just simply. Do not mock me, fellow students. Okay, here we are. 
So start there in the poem, you will find this. April is the cruelest. Then dead land. Uh, then uh, dull roots. Forgetful snow. Little life. Dry tubers. What impression? What is the impression created in you? An impression in the way of feeling of disappointment, disillusionment, very sad. Whoever has said all this. Either he is sad or he is his mourning. M-O-U-R-N-I-S. Mourning. The destruction. Or a stronger word, the extermination of a race or a civilization or culture or whatever is good in this world. So that is the impression. No doubt about that. Don't think about any other thing. For example, I myself have given about uh, 10 or 12 lectures on this in this wasteland, but the way I have done those lectures and the way I am doing now this practical criticism, absolutely no similarity. You can go through that if you want. It's a totally different. I also have forgotten all those things. Brand new minds. I, I do have when I approach this. So this is how you should approach the poem in a new critical style. Understand? So first point is that we get a disillusionment. Disillusionment. Nobody need to tell us. A critic need not tell us. The poem speaks. The line speaks, the lines speak for it. This is practical criticism. Okay. So we may not be able to complete the whole thing today. We will continue tomorrow. But for the time being, I am just giving an introduction. I will take the, then take the next line. April is the cruelest month, really. Now, in, in doing practi practical criticism, what have you to do, what have we to do, both of us, is you have to find out how does this piece work. What is the end end game? That is the goal of this line, these lines. What does the author want to tell us? Has he succeeded in doing this? What is the way of doing it? That's what we say about uh, of sushi and fabula. That is, uh, fabula is the story. Sushe is the method, isn't it? The method by which the formalists, the Setsuan, Todoro, and so on, they are speaking about this fabula and the and uh, uh, sushi. Yes, uh, forget it. Ah, yeah, because whatever knowledge you have, you can make use of. So that, or you can say the story and how the matter and how the has been presented. The craftsmanship, the craftsmanship, uh, all those things you can see. So these are the things that you have to explore when you get a piece. So we saw from this, nobody, there's, we don't want anybody's help to find out that this is about some disillusionment, some uh, degeneration, or some destruction, or some extermination, or it can be a civilization. It can be culture, it can be history, it can be human beings or anything like that. So what happens is, the, these lines present before you a polyphony. Polyphony. Polyphony is, we, are bor we borrow it from music, polyphony. Poly many, many sounds. Already these lines bring before us or speak in many sounds. But there is a unity. And what is that unity? Dissolution. How those phrases and words have been sprinkled and how we are attracted to which that, although it is a negative attraction. Okay, you get that idea. So this is what we call practical criticism. And then so, in practical criticism, what happens is, or new criticism, what happens is, you have to find out what the text does. 
what the text speaks to you. Not what the critic tells you. Or not what the biography of the author tells you. Or not what the cultural background tells you. It's very important. And then we take, so general idea will go. Now we enter into this labyrinth, see, and see the beauty of the craftsmanship. How at the end of the seventh line, the whole thing has been, there is, the, how, how he has achieved it, they knew ma. That is the final resolution. Okay, let's see. April is the cruelest month. See? Today we may have time only just to discuss the first first line. Continue the next day. This, I told you this is only an introduction. You can do it in your classroom or with your friends and you can bring the results to me uh, as in a day or two. Or you can compare what I, have, I am going to tell you. So this is how we are going to enjoy this piece. So here comes April. April is the coolest month. See here what happens is that you get a superlative. So that implies that the person who wrote this poem or wrote these lines might have experienced cruel month and cru crueler months by implication. So there must have been cruel months in his life and cruel of his life or life of the world or life of the earth or life of the people. Now this is the last, no further, can't go further. Life has become a pathless wood, the cruelest man. Before that, in our life, in his life, the life of this world, life of this universe, life of this earth, might have experienced cruel situations, crueler situations, but now is the climax. The climax. So that's very strongly put. The cry, climax of all cruelties. See? Therefore, he says, April is the coolest month. That's one way of understanding. Another way is, April. If you say this is practical criticism, so please don't fight each other. <laughs> don't fight with me also. April. April may not be just a month. It can be the part of a whole. Metonymy. A metaphor. Metonymy. Part of the whole means the whole year. So, the whole year, some people, or we, or the person who wrote, even a whole life, we can say might have been experiencing terrible or undergoing terrible experiences. So April is only part that way if you cancel. Practical criticism, don't there is no question of saying it will be this no there's no question of finding fault with me. Or you also. So that is it. What happened then? You get a, a global vision here. When you consider April as a metonymy, you get a global wish. Or the entire life of a person. Or the entire civilization. Or all the cultural artifacts and cultural progress that we have been making. All gone. Destroyed. Exterminated beyond redemption. This. So, April is the cruelest month. Then naturally you will ask month. So what? April is a month. And then February is a month. March is a month. So all are months. That is, when you have got months like this, you have got life. 
So April is the coolest month. A practical criticism if you do. So in my mind, these are the things that come. So that is the way I approach. We can approach the way you like. But at the end when we will see how are we going to come together and uh, resolve these tensions. That's what we are going. That's what makes us that's what makes us interesting and also gives us the reward for our work. It's a very rewarding experience. Practical criticism is a very rewarding experience as far as students of literature are concerned. Other people, why should they bother about all this? They can also <laughs> see that this was they say as a hobby. Now, April is the coolest month. So another thought comes to our mind. This April appears in other places in literature. A very famous place, you know, the Pallav to Canterbury Tale is chosen. So there it is not cool. There it is the happiest. This is the height of the spring season, where there is life, energy. Vrtu engendered is the flow. Plant that April lay with its sure as sweet. When the April with its shower is sweet. Enlivens the earth, trees, shrub, plants, animals, birds, human beings. Enter well is enlivened. There is tremendous activity. So here you have got a fun a, a beautiful contrast and an irony. That's it. You understand? This is how we can go forward. And we can continue, you will find this we will do tomorrow. This I told you now, it's a taste of new criticism. How are we going to? What is new criticism? Instead of giving you the theoretical aspects of uh, new criticism, I, I thought of starting this uh, series by a practical, doing a practical criticism. Understand? That is like I. R. Richards. He did it with his students. He asked, he did it with his students. Right? So the, you, now you understood now what is what is practical criticism? Autonomy of the text also means all the other things removed. Clipping. You clip other history, culture, other intention, all those things. Intentional intentions of other, how the readers respond, forget okay, about it. It's your own idea. It's your own brainstorming. So we will continue with this tomorrow because today it's already 15 20 minutes as I told you. Further if you go, you know, it will be it's a brainstorming and so you will get tired. And therefore, the time being by, have a nice time, enjoy your life.